The Klamath River winds for over 260 miles through southern Oregon and northern California and historically has been the third most productive salmon river in the United States. But in 2006, the commercial fishing season for salmon off the Pacific coast was cut by 90 percent, primarily because of a lack of fish coming from the Klamath. Peter Doyle has been a commercial fisherman for 36 years. He hopes that the 2007 salmon season is better than it was in 2006, but on his first trip of the new season, he only caught 16 fish. No, that's not good at all. Barely pays for the fuel. We're getting a fairly decent price now, but uh, with the fuel cost and all that, and when you consider that I had to run up from, from California, which is at least 300 miles from here, 30 is probably a break-even point. Besides fishing, there are hydroelectric and agricultural demands for water from the Klamath River Basin. In 2002, agricultural concerns were a top priority, and water from the Klamath Basin was diverted for irrigation. Many believe that the diversion cost fishing families and related businesses along the Pacific coast more than $60 million. There was 700 miles of the west coast closed last year because of the Klamath River. 700 miles of coast that we couldn't fish in. Jeff Feldner fishes out of Newport, Oregon, and like a lot of fishermen, he's had a difficult time turning a profit. I fished crabs in the winter, so I had that to fall back on, but the salmon fishery was a disaster. With expensive condominiums that overlook the harbor at Newport and a healthy tourism industry, the fact that a part of the coastal economy is not doing well is hardly noticeable. Fishermen are always optimistic, just like farmers. Next year's going to be better than this year. Nancy Fitzpatrick is the administrator for the Oregon Salmon Commission. Part of her job is to help salmon fishermen find financial assistance. When we started this Port Outreach Specialist Project this last year to help the fishermen access the state services, many of them would not access them because they say, I don't need food stamps, I can do this myself, I don't want help, I don't want a handout. While the 2006 salmon season was a disaster for fishermen, in 2001, farmers upstream were in trouble. Uh, 2001 was a rough year. Uh, to have a, an irrigation uh, district and operate it without water is, is uh, you can imagine, it was terrible. Uh, people lost their places, you know, crops uh, basically were non-existent. It was just tough. I mean, the whole community suffered. We will stand with the last farmer till the last farmer stands. Thank you. In 2001, when the federal government denied farmers access to water needed to irrigate their fields, agricultural concerns upstream took a backseat to fish downstream. In Klamath Falls, 20,000 people protested the move by forming a bucket brigade. Fifty buckets, one for each state, were passed from Klamath Lake to an irrigation canal, a symbolic gesture that drew national attention. The protest may have been why the federal government in 2002, under similar drought conditions, allowed farmers to irrigate, which in turn caused a decreased flow of water in the Klamath. The California Department of Fish and Game reported that it was low water flows in the Klamath that year that caused an increase in parasites and disease that may have killed as many as 68,000 salmon. Dave Solom is manager of the Klamath Irrigation District. I think the theme here is, is to try to work together to make this thing work out. Farmers and ranchers have, and fishermen have a lot in common. Uh, they're, they're all producers. Uh, they're trying to get by and, and make a living for their families. That sentiment is why farmers and ranchers in the Klamath Basin met with coastal fishermen to work on solutions, and why in 2006, agricultural interests in the area established the Klamath Relief Fund for Families of Commercial Fishermen. But beyond what agriculture's impact might be on fishing interests, there are hydroelectric dams on the Klamath, which many believe are causing the reduction in the salmon population. The sole purpose of those dams is to produce a minuscule amount of power by modern standards. And what they do is they jeopardize the health and safety of the whole rest of the river. Glenn Spain is the Northwest Regional Director for the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen Association. 
his group and others believe removing four hydroelectric dams that are up for licensing renewal would allow salmon access to 350 to 500 miles of currently inaccessible stream habitat. Dam licenses like this come up for review once every 30 to 50 years. And uh, we've got our generation's opportunity to make that river whole, to bring those river runs back, and to fail to do that would be a tragedy. Still, according to Pacific Core, the company that owns the dams, the electricity that the dams generate is a reliable source of renewable energy that allows the utility to meet the needs of its customers. Certainly it produces enough electricity to meet the needs of over 190,000 people each year, and that has tremendous value because there's no pollution involved in providing that uh, benefit to the public. However, Toby Freeman is the regional community director for Pacific Power, a division of Pacific Corps, which serves 1.6 million customers in six states. 190 miles upstream from the Pacific, the hydroelectric dam known as Iron Gate prevents fish from swimming any further upriver. Part of the original licensing agreement called for the construction of a fish hatchery at the site, which according to Freeman costs his company $500,000 annually to operate and for the past 50 years has produced roughly 25 percent of the Klamath Chinook salmon population. We do a lot to help the environment. In fact, our raptor uh, protection program is the model of the industry. We're providing an extensive network of campgrounds and boat launches to facilitate public recreation. This is uh, one of the things about hydropower. Certainly it produces clean, renewable electricity, but it also provides an array of other public benefits as well. Also hurt by weak salmon runs are Native Americans whose economy depends on the fish they harvest. With so many different constituencies depending on the Klamath, scientists hope they can increase catches and protect natural resources. In Newport, Oregon, researchers are associating fish in the ocean with their river of origin through DNA testing. Next week, we'll examine those efforts and learn how fishermen are adding value to their salmon harvest to increase profits. For Market to Market, I'm Jeannie Campbell.